In this tutorial, we're going to go over uh, the modeling of our uh, baloney prosthetic uh, design, and I've chosen to do sort of a prosthetic boot uh, for, my for my design. Some things about the illustration. You want to make sure that your model is to scale, that the model is to scale and that you've captured a front, um, in this case top and side ideally, but in this case I did a front uh, back and side, uh, front and back and the two sides and I decided through my drawing that I sort of like the design of uh, these, this front, this back and this side, these are the three elements that I want to bring in as a reference for my work in Rhino and so I'm going to get rid of the um, color layer here so that I just have a black and white and I'm also going to flatten the image uh, and so that I just have this to work with and now what I want to do is that I want to output each one of the images and I want to make sure that when I output the images that I capture this vertical reference line and this horizontal reference line. We're going to use these to scale our model once we get it into Rhino. So do that by getting my uh, rectangular marquee tool which is uh, M and I'm going to select this area right here and I'm going to do a control C control new to create a new layer hit enter and I'm going to hit control V to paste that in like so and I'm going to follow the same steps for this image right here control C control N enter control V and finally I'm going to capture the side here C control new enter control V and I've captured each one of those and I'm going to save these out as a uh, side uh, back and front and so that I have these images uh, that I can use as references in Rhino and that's sort of like the work that you do within Photoshop. The big, most important thing is to make sure that for each image you capture sort of like this midpoint tick mark and also this vertical reference because those will become very important when we're doing our scaling operations within Rhino. In this tutorial video we're going to go over how to um, model sort of our um, prosthetic uh, last are either below knee uh, prosthetic or our boot last in this case it's a boot last for our um, uh, prosthetic cover um, and I'm gonna go over how to use the picture frame command within Rhino uh, to bring in reference Im images that you can use for um, modeling uh, and once we do that, I'm going to show you how you can begin to model sort of the reference surface that you will use for your prosthetic design. Um, uh, I'm going to break the tutorial up into smaller parts so that you can deal with each step individually. Um, and uh, you can see how the, the um, the, the process and the workflow works. Uh, and this sort of, um, my design, I've sort of designed it as a boot and I'm actually going to use the boot shape itself uh, as the sort of foot last and I'm going to go over how you can actually do that in your design. And we're going to uh, review, uh, and it's a chance for you to employ a lot of the modeling techniques that you've learned so far in the uh, execution of this project to produce the uh, shell for your prosthetics cover. Okay, a model starts out with our um, prosthetic um, assembly, and it's basically the uh, foot print here and the pipe which attaches to it. And, and it's to this pipe that we're going to attach our um, prosthetic cover. Uh, and the model uh, in this case is in centimeters and this gives us our reference height and this gives us our foot. And we're going to use this foot 
as a reference to uh, bring in our um, drawing component. So let's go to the front window. And in the front window, I have uh, basically uh, the, the profile or right side of the foot. So the command that we use to bring in our images is called picture frame. Picture frame. And I'm going to bring in uh, the right image right here. And I'm going to start at zero. And with my ortho snap turned on, I'm going to scale up my image. And picture frame is a very good uh, method. And I'm going to bring this over and roughly align it to the foot. And I'm also going to scale this a little bit. Scale this here. Let me turn on my end snap so that that snaps properly there. And I'm going to scale this so that it covers the foot properly. Now, and I'm going to slide this over. And you can see that that sort of like the foot fits into that design at this point. Okay. Um, now, the nice thing about using the picture frame command is that it brings in the picture basically and attaches it to a, uh, a rectilinear NURB surface. And because it exists as an entity, we can create a new layer for it. I'm going to call this uh, side right, even though it conforms to the front window, but I'm going to call it right. And I'm going to select that and I'm going to change its object layer there. And I'm going to go up into the properties and go into the material node for that. And under the basic tab, one of our options is transparency. And I'm going to make that about 50% transparent so that I can um, see my design and my grid underneath that. And a couple things. I made my drawing in Rhino about 50% gray. I made my drawing about 50% gray because I knew that that's what the Rhino environment was. And you can actually take a sample from the Rhino environment, bring it into Photoshop so that your work background and your Rhino background matches up and you'll get a nice uh, match there. And if you make it transparent, you'll be able to see your grid elements through your design. And so I'm going to place this in here uh, like so. Um, and I don't like the way, one of the things that I don't like about uh, this assembly, and we're going to make some changes to it, is the way that the foot meets the ground. You notice that the heel is higher than the ball of the foot here. And so I, when I modeled my um, drawing, I made sure that the ball of the foot and the heel met at the ground. And we're going to make an adjustment there uh, for that. But this gives us a rough placement. Now I can also go into my... Um, I'm going to minimize my windows here, and I'm going to take this, and with my ortho snap turned on, I'm going to move this behind my design this way, so that now it's ghosted behind my design. I'm going to adjust the transparency a little more to make it even a little bit more transparent, but I can still see my lines there like so. Okay, so it's very important that we get this one entity to scale. I could have also um, moved it in the other direction like that if I wanted to make the foot uh, more dominant, but as I do my modeling work I want to be able to see the drawing a little bit more, so I moved it in this direction like so. Okay, and you can note that in the perspective window it's sort of aligned like that okay but in that in that front window I get a good alignment of the two and I can make some minor move adjustments to get it uh, just just right okay now once I've done that and I've sort of established the scale for my image here the next step is to create a, a reference line I'm going to come over here and I'm going to start right here at the bottom of my tick mark here. And with my ortho snap turned on, I'm going to make a reference line right there. And I'm going to use that line to scale all of the other images that I 
bring in uh, to this composition because as long as those lines match up, I know that the scale uh, will be will be on and proper. So let's go to the uh, right window. I'm going to go now to my. Um, I'm going to set the view to my right window, and I'm going to invoke the picture frame command here again, and I'm going to get my um, front layer. I'm going to bring that in. And I'm going to type in zero and I'm just going to drop that in for right now. Okay. And one of the things that I want to do, I want to bring that over and I want to align that line and for right now I'm going to go over to my layers and I'm going to turn off my prosthetic. Um, and I'm going to align this line to this curve that I created. Okay. And so I'm going to bring that over so that those line up closely like that. And I can zoom in to fine tune that. Okay. And actually I'm going to one of the reasons why I make my lines thicker is so that, you know, I can do that like so. And I have that line, and with my end steps turned on, uh, those are lined up. And so now what I want to do, I have to scale this to that line. And so what I want to do is get my scale tool, and what I want to do, I want to scale this element, and I want to start from the end there, and I want to go up to here, to the top, and I'm going to scale that down until it meets the end of that other line. And what that does for me is that now this line is aligned to the scale reference so that now both of those images are the um, proper scale. So now that I've done my, um, my scale, now I have to do the position. And this is where this tick mark here comes in handy. Okay, And what I'm going to do, I'm going to place a point um, I'm going to go back to my front view and I'm going to place a point in the middle of this tick mark right there like so. I'm going to use that as a reference and now uh, you bring up each window and what I want to do I want to select this and I want to do a move And I want to move from this reference point right here, and I want to move to that reference point right there. And what that does is that aligns the two of those elements together. Okay, that aligns the two of those together. And now what I'd like to do, I'm going to bring back my references. Let me turn on my pipe. Okay. And I'm going to take this. Once again, I'll go into my properties with this element. I'm going to go into my properties and I'm going to set that transparency down like so. And I'm going to slide this over so that it aligns along the center there like so. Okay. And once I've done that, I can once again slide that back in space in that direction to sort of emphasize the foot, slide it forward, and I can see my foot as a reference for my model here, like so. And that's your uh, basic framework. Now let me go uh, take care of a little uh, business here. I want to create a new layer. I want to call this front. I'm going to make that the current layer. Select that. And I'm going to change the object layer there. And what's nice about this technique is that you can now, uh, you have layer independence. So I can turn off that view if I don't want to look at it. Uh, if I go to my perspective window, 
I can turn off the right side if I don't want to look at it. And it gives you a lot more um, freedom uh, as to how you uh, use those, uh, how you use and employ those elements in your in your design. Now, one of the th problems that I see in this model already is that if you look at the model, the inside of the foot right here is uh, sort of denoted there, but in the model it seems to be, in the drawing it seems to be, de de be denoted there. So what I'm going to do to fix that problem, I'm going to select this right here, and I'm going to do a mirror function. And I'm turn copy to no. And I'm going to start right here in the center using the picture plane as a reference. And I'm going to do a vertical line that way. And now I can move this over. And it's now the ball is uh, where it should be. It's sort of a line the way the way the where it needs to be uh, aligned uh, within the design. Um, and that's basically how you set up your references. I'll add the back uh, reference and then we're going to get into how we, uh, the next portion of our tutorial, which will discuss how we uh, create, the, uh, create the boot, some of the steps that we go through in order to create the boot.